next on It's Your Season. Babies are sleeping in cribs right now and bassinets that that mother is, cr- is listen, eating her fingernails and scratching her hair. That father's trying to plot and plan. How are we going to take our kid to the next level? Everybody at every stage has cares of their life. It's just that when you carry it, it cripples you. And when it cripples you, it worries you. And when it worries you, you begin to worry your life instead of giving praise to the give of life. And God said, you must learn to release it. We want to thank you for your ongoing support and prayers as Bishop Felton takes the gospel around the world. Stay tuned. There's more to come. Hey, good morning. I'm Bishop Keith Felton bringing you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I am excited to be back in your living rooms in 2021 with new content, with new messages, new encouragement to help push you into your destiny in Jesus Christ. I want to personally thank all the letters and well wishes from across the nation that have been blessed by this message and this broadcast. We are going to continue to bless you from North Carolina all the way to Chicago. Thank you so much for your love and your outpouring of blessings on Trinity Christian Center. This morning, this message I'm going to preach to you is going to change your life. It's going to make you look at things differently and empower you to keep walking through Christ Jesus. Watch this. Care upon him, for he careth for you. Listen to this right here. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a, as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. I want to read verse number seven one more time. Cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want to teach this message this morning. The the name of this message I want to title it, what God gave me, is called Release It. Somebody say release it. And as I'm going through my notes and I'm going through all the things that I sometimes I, I mentally go back through and I say, God, these messages, you're always, it seems like they overlap. It seems like you've given me this to say before, but God said, but listen, this is a different time. This is a different season. This is a different level of attack. And sometimes even the teacher, even professors, will have to bring back lessons of remembrance to edge it in our spirits and to sear it in our hearts so we can understand the gravity and and, and just the sheer weight of what's going on in our own lives. This message message is for that individual right now who's moving forward. Somebody say, I'm moving forward moving forward but yet still shackled by things of the past decision making that went wrong relationship problems things that crippled you silently that people don't see and I don't care who you are you're always crippled by something you're always crippled either you're crippled by decisions that you made inadvertently or you're crippled by someone else's life outside of you who has made uh, uh, unilateral decisions that your life is a part of and you become crippled by it But God is sure with me, even last night in prayer, said, you have to teach my people as I'm saying to you, I cannot propel them forward if they don't release themselves from the guilt of their past and and, and be mangled up with the movements of things that they had nothing to do with. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I begin to look at this. He said, cast your cares. Peter is writing, he's saying, cast your care, not cares, your care upon him, God, for he careth for you through Christ Jesus. And I say, God, that is amazing that one care, not cares, but one care. God said, everybody is linked to one thing that keeps them up. Everybody is linked to an external thing that keeps them up. There are two types of cares. There are external cares, which we deal with every day. External cares are this. I've got to pay my energy bill. I've got to make sure my lease or my mortgage is paid. I've got to make sure that things are well at my house so I can have a life and keep living on the level that I choose to live. That is an external care. An external care are things that you can see that you wear with that God gives you the strength to make right. But then there are internal cares. And internal cares are kind of like, they're sad in a way because everybody has an internal care. Everybody has something that they've done, something that was said about them, something that they was a part of, something down through the years that even though the time has changed, that's still crippling concern is still in your spirit. 
And sometimes you find it hard to let go. Sometimes you look at your kids and say, well, maybe had I done this better, now, maybe if I'd done that better, maybe they would have turned out a little bit better than what they are. Well, who's to say they turned out wrong? It's just that you're caring about internal things that other people don't care about. Isn't it amazing what we care about? Tell somebody, say, what are you caring about? Isn't it amazing how you can sit in your house and the place that God has blessed you with and you begin to care about things that, you, that God said you should have released this years ago? And you say, well, God, how do, how do I know I have cares that I have not released? Anything that you are rehearsing, you have not released. Amen. Oh, you're hearing what I'm saying? Anything that you have are rehearsing over your life and rehearsing what you should have done, you have not released it. And men and women who don't release things are not good worshipers, they're warriors. God has not given you the spirit of worry. He has given you the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. But you have to understand this. Where there's worry, there's no worship. What, listen, worry is worship. Listen, when you worry, you worship the circumstance. But when you worship, you worship God. And God said, I have to devoid you from your worry, your cares, and your concerns so I can get you back to worshiping God. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? God said, I have to, I have to get, I have to drain you from the things that's carrying you and holding you down that are spiritually, subconsciously crippling you. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? He said, because if you continue to worry internally, you won't worship externally. God didn't save you to worry yourself to death. And people say, oh, I don't worry. Everybody worried about something. Everybody's got cares about something. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? That when you look at your life, God said everybody at different stages of their life has a care about something. And if that care is not released to God, that care will become worry. And that worry will become a frustration. And now you're getting angry when you're not supposed to be getting angry. And you're not living when you're supposed to live because you're still carrying cares that you have not properly released. Are oh, y'all getting anything out of this? We're just going to teach this morning because somebody needs to know that you could live much better spiritually than you are if you learn how to release those cares. Everybody at different stages of their life are worrying or caring about something. You take a mother who found, you take a young lady who founds out that she's pregnant and deep down in her womb there's a fetus that's growing in amniotic fluids and amino acids that doesn't even have a face yet that's causing her to throw up, that's causing her to be nauseous. Don't think that she don't care about how she's going to support that kid. You got people that's in prison right now who's pinning letters that's got care that who's going to take care of my mother, who's going to take care of my father, who's going to take care of my kid. Everybody at every level has got care that they're caring about. You got, you got people that's raising kids by themselves. You got babies asleep in cribs right now and bassinets that that mother is, cr is, listen, eating her fingernails and scratching her hair. Their father's trying to plot and plan. How are we going to take our kid to the next level? Everybody at every stage has cares of their life. It's just that when you carry it, it cripples you. And when it cripples you, it worries you. And when it worries you, you begin to worry your life instead of giving praise to the giver of life. And God said, you must learn to release it. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? You have deep down in the cell of us all our spirit, there is something that concerns you. I told somebody the other day, I said, well, my oldest son is getting grown now. He's going to be on his own. And I thought about it. I said, now my care and concern about him will be intensified because now he's on his own. What makes you think it gets easier because they're out of your house? It gets it more, it gets more nerve-wracking. But I got to cast that care upon him. At least my worry crippled his life. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? At least my worry crippled his life. That means that God said your worry about that circumstances that you're caring about can ultimately cripple your growth and development in Christ Jesus. God said don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. Jesus told the disciples, say, don't worry about Don't you see the robins? They need to till the soul, and but God provide for them. Look at the hillside. It's more raid than Solomon's temple. But God said he keeps everything in perfect peace. And God said, why would you allow your past to worry you? Why would you allow your presence to frustrate you if you give it to me I cast all your cares upon me are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying 
It's time for us to be real with what we're dealing with. You cannot be effective in the body of Christ if you're worshiping on Sunday and going home and worrying and biting your nails off and shaking out your hair and not getting much sleep and need this to go to sleep and need that to lay down. God said you have to let this stuff go. There are certain words that the enemy will hold over God's people from their past. There's somebody that's worried right now that will God forgive me that, that I got an abortion? Will God forgive me that I drove this young lady across state lines to get an abortion? You got people that's worried about things like that. You got people that are worried about the things that they did when they was young and when they was out there. You have to let that stuff go and know that God will forgive you if you confess your faults. I wasn't the mother that I wanted to be. I wasn't the father that I wanted to be. You got to release that from your spirit if you're going to walk with Christ. He wants you to be weight free because if you weight it down you cannot worship up if you weight it down is anybody in the building the reason why you can't worship the way you want to worship because your mind is rehearsing the guilt and the pain and all the trauma that you had to go through but the devil is a liar you got to release that so God can release your arms to give freedom do you not know that when you lift both of your hands up that's a symbol of that I'm free no longer bound no more chains holding me my soul is resting it's just a blessing thank the Lord hallelujah I'm free but you cannot say that if you're worrying about things you can't change do you not realize that when God said when you worship me you break every chain of the enemy that's why the apostle said cast your cares on him when you cast when you release it you break every chain of the enemy from over your life you worship in the midst of your worry you break every chain every fetter it's almost, it's almost like you got a, a hammer and a chisel and you're breaking every link. The Holy Spirit has given you the power to break every link of the enemy, every generational curse, every hex, every demonic curse that's over your life. You're not worried about your finest anymore because you know that God's got you. You're not worried about your health anymore because you know God's got you. You're not worried about your 4K in this rugged economy because God's got you. And when you begin to release that, you begin to do better in this thing called walking with the Lord uh, because you understand that you cannot walk with God if your feet are chained together and if your arms are chained down God said but worship breaks every chain uh, worship begin to say I trust God uh, with my kids I trust God with my finance I trust God with my life I trust God with my going in and my going out I trust God I release myself from stress uh, I release myself from worry I release myself from all the hexes of the enemy and I choose to trust God I release myself from low self-esteem. I release myself from past failures and frustration. And I move forward or I press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Tell somebody to I release you. Release you right now. Hallelujah. But let me show you that the flip side of that. If it is better that when we worry, we actually weld the chain back that God broke. We call, I like to call it worry welders. Do you not know I can, God can break chains over my life in the sanctuary and I go right back home and through my word, my hands will get right back and I weld it back together. I know God going to do it, but I'm dealing with this right here. And God said, you were washing me free, but now you're worrying. It's putting these chains back together again. And now you got to go to the sanctuary and get God to break it all over again. It's a week to week breaking of chains because you worship her and the chains break. You go home and you weld them back together. You worry, you worship, you worry, you worship, you weld and you put it back together. God destroyed, you put it back together. God destroyed, you put it back together. You worship it on Sunday, but it's Monday morning, you weld it and you say, God, how in the world am I going to do this? God said, let that stuff go. Release yourself from it. You can't keep living your life in a state of hiatus. God said, release it. It is a time in the body of Christ. If we want to be free, you can stay free. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? You can stay free. Trials come to ignite things. But God said, you can't, you can't control the trials. But you can control how you cast it on God. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? He said, cast your cares. Does anybody know what it is to cast something? To cast something doesn't mean that. Now, if I cast something, that means the thing that I'm throwing it to is a little ways off. Did y'all get that? 
if I catch this talent elder, see he's a ways off. He catching it. I'm casting my cares on him. That means that God said, when you throw it, I don't want you nowhere near it. When you get it off of you, I need distance from you and it. Because how I'm going to handle it, I don't need you around it. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? God said, I have to get, let the thought back to me. Uh, see, see, when he, when, you, when he cast it to me, listen, I, I, listen, I got to care right now. He's God. And God said, no, no, I, I don't want you always, I don't want you to come to me. I want you to cast your cares to me. Stay right where you're at. Because if I allow you to come and check out how I'm going to handle this, your cares for what you cast will stop me from freeing you in the spirit. Have you ever had somebody that you tried to help, but then you help them, then they try to tell you how to help them? Am I making sense to anybody? So you have to say, look, you called me over here to help you. Now, if you don't need any help, I could have stayed right back and, and watched a, a walk a Texas Ranger to 8 o'clock. But do you not realize that God says the same way in the same form to throw that back, Elder? He said, I, got to, I have to teach you how to cash because how I cure what you cash, you might not agree with it. Lord, these people are getting on my nerves. God, I don't know what to do. God, you got to help me, and you cast it on me. And God say, now, I'm going to cause them to release you from your job to get you to the job that you need to be, but I had to get you to give me your cares so I can cure what you cast. It is impossible for God to cure what you casting if we're always crippling his decision making. Oh, my God. I want y'all to let that sink in for a little while. I'll post something. I think it was last year, and God, I don't really post a lot. Yeah, I think I'll post a little bit more this year if it comes to my mind, amen. Sister Jamie, you got to help me, amen. I post something, I say, if in 2020, God released all the people that was in your life that wasn't supposed to be, I'm paraphrasing, then in 2021, you slowly give them permission to come back, you will become your own pandemic. <laughs> That means that God say, you are the problem. The casting of the problem is not the problem. It's the caster. Do you want me to cure it or do you want me to talk about it? God is saying right now, do you want me to cure this or do you just want something to talk about? God said, until you cure it, it will cripple you because it will, listen, it will maximize itself in your mind. Like a cancer, when, when cancer spread it, the doctors call a word they call metastasize in your spirit until it begins to spread out abroad. Then every time you talk, you're talking about that care. Every time you walk, you're talking about that care. Your whole life is based upon that one care. And God said, now, if you were cast that care off of your life, can you imagine what we could construct? Do you know how we can take you to the top? Do you know how we can do great and seen and mighty things through your life if you learn how to cast your cares without me showing, without you telling me how to cure it? I can cast it now, and God can catch it. But I go over there and say, God, what are you going to do with it this time? <laughs> God, get them back. They did me wrong. God said, who are you to tell me how to cure what you cast? It's your problem. It's, it's not my problem. It's your problem. And God, God showed me this. It is important for us. I'm about done. It is important for us as believers to understand you cannot walk with God full of worry. You can't do it. You cannot walk with God full of guilt. You can't do it. Wherever there's guilt, there's lack of worship. Because the individual will feel like they don't deserve what God is getting ready to do through them and for them. The devil is a liar. You have to release yourself from the guilt of the past. Your cares will evolve into worries and worries will evolve to frustration and frustration will evolve to anger and now you have deep seated pent up anger that you have to release from you because you because bitter and sweet water cannot come out of the same fountain. And I'm teaching and preaching this morning to allow that woman or man to know that's listening by TV, watching by TV, listening by radio, and those are here that you have to release yourself from the thing that you thought you were delivered from because it's not the devil holding you up externally. It's the lack of releasing that's holding you up. You have to got to come to terms with some things that if I don't release this, I will worship my problems and not worship God. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? 
Do you not know it's, it's frustrating for those who are in the nursing building business? Do you not know that nurses and doctors around this world, they're not frustrated over the coronavirus. They're not. We got a nurse right here. She'll tell you. They're not frustrated over the coronavirus. What they're frustrated over is, is this. They know they're doing their best, but these people are not getting healed. And if you are a caregiver, look at this, a caregiver, a caregiver, a doctor, a nurse, uh, anyone that's in a hospital who's giving care, the ultimate frustration is when you're caring for somebody. That seems like the person you're caring for is getting worse instead of getting better. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Tell somebody, say, he's talking about me right now. And God said, I've given you houses that you don't deserve to live in. I've given you money in your pocket that you can take your own self and five others out to eat. I've the best you to come from the kitchen sink to the beauty salon to get your hair done and your nails did. God said, I did all of this. And God said, and all the things that I'm doing, it seems like you're still sick. God said, I cared for you and I keep caring for you, but somewhere in the lineage of your life that some things you say, I got to put this behind me. I've been doing this for too long now that I got to cast this care because he's been giving me care. He's been caregiving me in this area and I have to get better. Can I, can I go here before I leave? Either you are a man or woman, you got to get this, Either you are a man or woman who, bring it, who brings the anointing that breaks yokes, that, that breaks fetters from off people's lives, or you are just a spiritual caregiver. And I know nobody wants to hear that, but you know, I, that's why God called me to tell the truth. That's it. And I just want to let everybody know in 2021, I don't want to be a spiritual caregiver, meaning that I'm giving care to a condition that never changes. Isn't that frustrating? You loving and bending over backwards and you sacrificing and you pushing and you developing but seems as though the thing just never getting better. God said because you have become a spiritual caregiver but I call you through my son Jesus that when you open up your mouth uh, demons flee. Uh, when you open up your mouth uh, the devil has to run out of your house seven ways. Uh, God said I didn't call you to care for people that don't care about coming out. Uh, all they want to talk about is what they're going through but God said the anointing Anointing destroys the yoke. It doesn't stroke the yoke. It destroys it, baby. And time for us as a body of Christ to stop stroking yokes, to stop talking nice to yokes. We got to stand on what we believe and begin to crush the hand of the enemy from over our lives. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I don't know how I'm going to make it. You know how you're going to make it. You know how you're going to make it. You've got enough word in you. And if we are to care give to a certain extent, we have to care give to the point of reminding the people that are moping about the God that can do anything. But I'm not about to sit here with your blessed self. Oh, help me, Bishop. Preach all day, Bishop. You got to talk to somebody who's healthy. You got to talk to somebody that you see God's hand is all over. And the moment they start getting this rough, you got to say, baby, I'm not about to sit here with your blessed self. Your kids are not on a respirator. You're not hooked on a lung machine. I'm not going to sit right here and let you mope and complain to me. Let's get out and get somebody saved. Let's go to the old folk home. Let's go to the hospital. But I'm not going to waste my time on a problem that you really don't want to solve. Look at somebody say I'm past that. Do you not realize it? God said when people want to solve them, they ask the right questions. I never forget, I was looking at this thing on TV and, and, and the man came to this lady and he said, I'm trying to get my, uh, I'm trying to get my, my credit together. Da, 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 da. And I said, I would just listen to him. And, and, and she couldn't talk because he was telling her all the bad decisions he made. He filed this, he did this. And I'm like, man, he doesn't realize that the person holding the keys it's, it's got, the, got the solution right there, but he's too busy talking. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Deacon Rodney, he said everything but this. He never asked the lady, how can you get me out of this? Mm, 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 mm. Did y'all get that right there? He, he, listen, he never asked the lady, how can you help me get out of debt? He was telling her about his crisis, but he never asked her for the cure. 
Is y'all getting anything out of this? Have you ever been sitting with somebody that act, they're just talking all the time and they don't realize that all they got to do is shut their mouth up? And I know this kind of trite, but I'm going to preach it just like I feel it. Tell somebody to tell you, you got to shut up. When you're in the presence of God, God says, stop telling me about what you done cast on me and let me cure it. I've got the solutions. I've got the answers. But you keep telling me how bad it is. I can't tell you how bad it's going to get. God said be still and know that I am God. Listen, I don't know how we got here, but I feel the Holy Spirit push me in this way. God said my people, they have the answers. My saved, my sanctified, my ones that are filled with my precious spirit, they have the answers. But sometimes people can go through things. Listen to this now. They can go through things and sometimes as leaders in the body of Christ, it squelches the cure because we're overwhelmed by the condition. Are y'all getting anything out of this right here? And sometimes you want to say, but you can't say anything. Why? Because the condition has got to be cast properly. Now, now first lady, I tell you, when we go through something, I pray to God, how are we going to get out of this? She said, one time she said, well, you know, uh, listen, if you give it to him, that's his problem. He got the cure. He's got the condition. When you give him the condition, oh, I threw that condition hard, boy. When you give him the condition, stop praying for the cure. Because when you give him the condition, he's not going to give it back. He said, now throw it back. He's throwing back the cure. I gave him the condition. He gave me the way out. Somebody, God said, I can't cure what you don't cast. I can't cure it. I can't cure it. If you hold on to it and stop telling people about this and stop telling people about that and I'm going through this and I'm going through that. Do you not know? Listen, listen. I got to say this. Lord, y'all probably, y'all probably stoning with many stones. But I'm going to see I don't preach. Amen. Do you know in the Catholic church there's this thing called confession. You know, you go into the booth and you, and you talk to the priest and you tell the priest all the stuff you did, good, bad, or indifferent. Well, in, in, in the world today, I, I told First Lady, Facebook is the new confessional. Because the, you, <laughs> Facebook, people would tell you everything on Facebook. And I said, what would their life be if they gave it to God? What would their life be if they just said, you know what? I'm not going to post this. Because for the fear of people wanting to figure out what I'm going on, I give it to God and watch God give me the condition. I mean, change my condition. And listen, and God says, stop allowing Facebook to be your confession booth. People don't need to know everything about what's going on in your life, how it's coming in and out of your life. That's private life. That's private life. And you don't have to confess your whereabouts or what's going on because God said, if you cast your cares... <laughs> the Holy Spirit, I'm gonna go to him. God said, "Do you not? Do you realize the reason why we like to confess things, uh, minister Ty, is because we get a response. We get a response. If I confess something towards you, you, the only thing you can tell me is say, oh, everything gonna be all right.' But if I confess it to God, sometimes God don't say anything right off. And you know, human beings, we don't like that. Oh, we like something to talk back to us." Oh, child, you coming out? Lord, you just give God some time. He gonna come out. But when you get when you cast it to God, see, I can I can I can confess something to you, and you can tell me, you can encourage me on the spot, and I may need to hear that. And I may, and sometimes when you confess to God, God don't say nothing for a month. But we can't deal with that right now. I got to know something. I got something right. I got to get confirmation. I got God say no, you don't. You need to be still and know that I am God. Is anybody in the building? You ask any man or woman who has been through major surgery. I'm not talking about re re removing a hangnail. I'm talking about when they cut your body open. Did you not know they put you? Listen, we are out of time, but I'm, I'm not out of word. I'm so excited to be bringing you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. It does my heart well to be able to preach you and to encourage you and to push you into your destiny in Jesus Christ. And until next Saturday on this station, is your season. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. We are so honored to have shared this time with you. If this message has truly blessed you and you desire a copy as well as other ministry materials, please stay tuned. But I'm not about to sit here with your blessed self. Oh, help me preach it. Preach all day, Bishop. You got to talk to somebody who's healthy. You got to talk. 
For your love gift of any size, you will receive this message in its entirety on CD. Somebody that you see God hand is all over and the moment they start getting this rough, you got to say, baby, I'm not about to sit here with your blessed self. Your kids are not on a respirator. For your love gift of $25, we will send you this dynamic message on CD and DVD. You're not hooked on a lung machine. I'm not going to sit right here and let you mope and complain to me. Let's get out and get somebody saved. Let's go to the old folk home. Let's go to the hospital. But I'm not going to waste my time on a problem that you really don't want to solve. And when your love gift is $50, we will send you this message on CD, DVD, and this inspiring book by Bishop Felton. Until next time, it's your season. <laughs>